Okay, welcome back everyone here live in San Francisco for the Amazon Web Services AWS Summit. This is where they teach and people learn about cloud. Not their big event, reInvent, which we broadcast live last time, but really one of their 15 events that go around the world. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm Jeff Frick, general manager of theCUBE, and our next guest is Joel Davney, CEO of CloudNext. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So um, let's talk about what's your, what your business is. The cloud wars are happening. You guys are in the middle of your disruptor. You're disrupting the incumbents. You have a different model. Talk about your company and what your business model is and what's unique about your business. Well, I think a good way to talk about what we do that's so different is if everybody heard the announcements this morning about price cuts, especially yes. in the Amazon 43rd, ecosystem. 43rd time and John is already on the guys for the, uh, for the test to do it again. <laughs> Just released it at 10. He's like, when's the first price cut? So, <laughs> Uh, what we tell our customers often is, hey, the very first time that you engage with us, I promise you this will be the most expensive time that you ever spend with us. Because we know Amazon's going to cut their prices, and with the Cloud Next to Business model, we've taken a utility approach to delivering services, which is very unique. I mean, How do you survive in that price cut, which essentially, if you don't have large scale, it's a, right, it's a race to the bottom, so you have to introduce those services. Um, so, okay, you, you can compete with those price cuts. What other things are you going to have? You know, I don't really think it's competing with the price cuts. It's enabling the customers to um, get full value of those price cuts. I mean, this is why customers, all of our customers are driving to cloud computing. They want to plug into a lot of innovation that Amazon drives our customers, and they also want to take advantage of those deep price cuts. So if you have a traditional services model that says, well, just pay us a lump sum of money, and then we're going to get you there, cross our fingers and hope, um, it really is not a true utility model of professional services. So at Cloud Nexa, we've developed um, cloud management as a service, and what we tell our, our customers is that we're in it with you. We're going to do the architecture, we're going to do the migration, we're going to do the advisory services, all the things that traditional integrators do, but guess what? We're not going to charge you one penny until you're actually spending money on Amazon and able to realize the value of the commitment that you've made to this technology. And you know that moves a lot of barriers away. You say it's a race to the bottom. It's not really a race to the bottom. It's a race to consuming logical technology that a lot of firms, large and small, have difficulty consuming. And we really remove that barrier. Yeah, so them. you shift what the value is. So your value is on the, on, on the higher end services. If they're just going to offer gear, okay, that's their, that's their business. Well, I mean, it really depends on the type of customer that you're talking about. Yeah, it is a value play in making sure that the customer gets the full value out of the solution. And it's also a big leap of faith. Um, because one of the things that we do differently is we don't have uh, tying contracts. Even though we're dedicated towards Amazon. Um, and customers can actually leave our tutelage at any time. Um, if they don't like the services that we're providing, if they're not getting good value, if we're not reducing their prices or reducing the technology they need to be successful on the platform, they can either take it in-house or, or go to another party. Right. So we're in it, we put, our, we put our technology up there for the customer, and we have skin in the game to make sure that they're going to reach their goals. So we were talking earlier, there was a lot of talk in the early days, right? It was all test dev and shadow IT right. is where a lot of the implementations are going. Where are you seeing it going now? What are some of the leading applications where people say, I want either A, this is a safe thing I think we can get in in the cloud and kind of, not, not test dev, but test in terms of, of being in this infrastructure, or where are the ones where people are saying, oh my gosh, we have got to get here now, whether that be competitive pressure, the boss, the board. So, um, that is the million dollar question, right? Where do you, where do you bet? Um, I think a lot of that depends on where your, where your feet are. I mean, here in the Valley, uh, we're in the high-tech mecca, uh, but there's lots of other pockets around the country and the, and the planet that have much different uh, technical requirements and, 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 and solutions, or, and solutions <laughs> that they need. Like, right. For example, we do a lot of work with the Amazon public sector team, and in the public sector organization, we're working with the federal government on large implementations, and you know, the government customers have certainly um, unique sets of compliance and obligations that you must fulfill, not only security, but you know, things like ITAR and um, things that a lot of um, other organizations don't necessarily think about. But if you move down from that, and within the public sector, you go to education and universities. You know, what do universities want? Universities want to expose this technology so that their constituents 
their researchers and their students can rapidly have access to technology, very similar to most businesses, right? So when you're looking at the type of customer, you know, education has one set of criteria, governments have others, then you, know, you look at nonprofits, all in the public sector space. Nonprofits probably more so than any customer in the universe are concerned about cost. Right. I mean, because they're working on slim budgets and the value proposition of what cloud offers them, being able to have highly available um, applications running or websites, being able to service their mission uh, for the lowest possible cost is really key. You take that over to the commercial side of the house and we can stratus that right up. We can say, well, small businesses, they're probably single app, um, technology firms are building their apps or um, ISVs that want to move their application into the cloud. All of those are fair game. Then as you move up from there into a large organizations, um, ERP systems are certainly coming to play, collaboration systems, uh, give a shout out to one of our partners, Alfresco. Um, you know, lots of really- We just, we had on yeah. uh, earlier. Will we sell? Yep, or, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, song. really good solutions that are geared Luis towards- Luis over there, he heard, us, he heard us talking about him, his ears are burning. <laughs> Luis Al, and so, <laughs> okay, Luis. Uh, so, you know, it's not a one size fit all. I, right. I know everybody would like it to be, but I think what you really need to do is look at the company, look at the solution, and hey, isn't it great? Here we are, CloudNext, uh, a Philly-based high-tech firm. That's something you probably won't hear too often. Uh, but really owe a lot of um, where we are today getting here from you know, the VCs that supported us in the Philadelphia community, right, right. like Ben Franklin Technology Partners. Right. And I went to Wharton, uh, first round capital, Michael Carter, yeah. Safeguard Scientific. Right. So it's, it's, it, well, yeah. actually I keep getting on the uh, the first round capital guys today. We need to do a Cube Philly event uh, well, for we'll the be Philly happy Tech to community. There. That's great. And uh, you know, it's really great being in Philly and I think it really takes us a little bit out of the fray. Right. And it's kind of somewhat disarming. And uh, you know we come in as a as a trusted partner and advisor, and we, we give our customers high value. Yeah. What doing. And everyone wants to know what's going on with the quarterback controversy. In Philly. <laughs> That's the real big. Well, now they got Mark Sanchez. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, welcome to Philly, where they throw snowballs at Santa. I, 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 I got a I got an email from one of my buddies, one of my good former business partners, who's a giant uh, Jets fan, rather a big oh. Jets fan. And he was all happy about their quarterback acquisition. <laughs> I was like, thank God. Just wait. <laughs> a little swap, a little swap. So talk about uh, new apps being deployed in this great cloud environment versus migrating old stuff over. Um, what are some of the, the factors that are driving all that migration into this new infrastructure? I assume that's a, probably a good part of your business, doing integration and migration of, of old stuff. Um, well, a large percentage of our customers actually are existing Amazon clients who um, either understanding that it's a little bit more complex and there's a lot more innovation um, than meets the eye. And so um, whether it's a new app or an existing app, um, it's an existing app there's a certain amount of um, re-engineering architecture that's involved and we'll advise them on that. New apps, I mean, they have a big advantage. Right, they're right. building for speed, they're building with the latest um, solution sets. If they're smart, they're taking all the Amazon bits to make it really easy and cost effective for them. Um, you know, it really just depends on your starting point. Not everybody's lucky enough to start from the beginning and, right. and get moving. Right, right. But, but, but won't that be the true kind of indicator when there's this big migration of the old stuff um, into this new infrastructure? Or is it just too painful? Uh, you know, I had a... Um, is there enough opportunity in the new stuff that that, that just gets uh, put to the bottom of the, of the list? You know, if. I had a really good friend from a very large open source company who had a really strategic management leadership position there who put his arm around me back in 2009 and he said, come on, Joel, nobody's going to move their ERP systems to the cloud. And at the very same time, we were working on the very first SAP migration for Lionsgate. Um, so I would say if you believe that it's not going to happen, you can put your head in the sand and you can live that nightmare. Uh, but you know we're going to eat your lunch. We're going to be out there. We're going to find those opportunities. We're going to work with those customers that want to take advantage of the technology and the cost reductions, and and make it happen for them. Make it happen. Yeah. Final uh, question for you. A little share, bit of Philly in my response. Share, yeah, sorry. no, no, I love Philly. I, I grew love up in, Philly. I grew up in Jersey, actually, Northern Jersey, Bergen County. Um, I love Philly. And it's a tough town, Philly. Believe me. <laughs> Great, great town. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Southern Jersey. Camden, though. Southern <laughs> Jersey is either you know you got Southern Jersey is either part of Philly. You know, it's like a middle 
no man's land in Jersey. But anyway, so folks out there, share with them your perspective of the industry. A lot of people want to know um, what's going on. You're on the chessboard every day. You're CEO of the company in the cloud, great space. Uh, a lot of opportunity, a lot of, a lot of things going on. Bottom line for people out there, what's happening? What is the true transformation in the cloud? What is this all the hub up about? Yeah. Well, it's all about bringing innovation to the organization. It's all about reducing your total cost of operations and being able to streamline your go-to-market strategies, taking more attempts at creating your applications at a lower possible cost. And, um, you know, if you're a little gun shy about your own particular internal team resources, we see this a lot from customers, reach out to a partner. Amazon has a phenomenal partner network. There's, I believe there's something like 8,000 Amazon partners in the ecosystem. CloudNext, of course, is a premier partner, one of 22. Um, but you know, we're the ones that are going to help these customers really get over those hurdles and help them adopt. Um, it's it's real. I mean, if you just look at the statistics, if there's, in our own little segment of cloud management and security, uh, Gartner pegs the the segment at uh, 3.8 billion dollars for 2014. I mean, that probably didn't even exist you know, four or five years ago. So, you know, it's here, it's real, get on board, pick a small project, get your feet wet with it, live the dream. There you go. Joel Dabney here inside the Cube, CEO of Cloud Next. Check out their business model, cloud management as a service. Obviously, this is a big space, a lot of stuff happening, early days. This is the Cube, we go where the action is, and the action is here in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>